Today we're talking not so much about a single exhibition with a single artist's work, but about an art prize, a national art prize, the Gallipoli Art Prize 2020. And we have three artists with us today. Uh, the winning artist, Alison Mackay, for her work, Breathe. Hello, Alison. Hello, Richard. Nice to be here. Uh, we have Deirdre Bean, whose work was highly commended, and that's Major Smith's Petrichor. Hello, Deirdre. Hello, Richard. Thanks for having me. And we also have the other artist whose work was highly commended, Laurie Pensini, and her work is The Telegram. Hello, Laurie. Yes, hi, Richard. Nice to be here. Well, look, welcome to all of you and congratulations to all of you uh, for your works in the Gallipoli Art Prize. And I should perhaps remind the viewer that the idea of these interviews is to be able to listen to and watch the interviews while also uh, enjoying exploring the website and seeing the images, hopefully at the same time as listening to the interview. Uh, so the website for the Gallipoli Art Prize is gallipoliartprize.org. Dot au, um, which also incorporates uh, a very innovative virtual tour of the exhibition. So please do come on board and have a look at that. Let's start with the, the winning work, uh, as we should. The prize winning work was entitled Breathe by Alison Mackay. And um, Alison, give us a sense of, as someone stands in front of this work, what are they going to see and, and what would you like them to think about? So the work is a nine panel oil painting uh, and it features nine different gas masks. Uh, most of the gas masks are from around the time of World War I and World War II, which is around the time that the gas masks were originally pattern patented, uh, 1914 uh, was that date. Uh, so I'd like people to think about um, breathing, if that's the title of the painting, and protecting the breath, which is what gas masks were for. Uh, we breathe about 15,000 times a day and we do it almost automatically and without that um, we die. So uh, the gas masks are incredibly important. So what was the trigger for the gas masks to become the subject of your Gallipoli Art Prize work? Yes, look, in the current climate, um, when everybody is thinking about coronavirus, and obviously we're doing this remotely because of that, uh, the painting actually wasn't about coronavirus at all. It was actually made at the end of January, um, beginning of February, uh, which for people who don't know, that was a time when bushfires were ravaging Australia, and particularly the New South Wales South Coast, where I live and work. So actually the painting was much more about the bushfires than it was about coronavirus, and particularly about the RFS and the way they were epitomising the qualities of the Anzacs at the time in terms of courage and comradeship and love of country. So that was really the background to the painting. Deirdre, uh, with Alison just uh, talking then about background to painting, there's so much that can be in a painting that may not be immediately obvious. Uh, your highly commended work is called Major Smith's Petrichor. Um, and there's a lot of very subtle paintwork in the background of this image of a firearm, of a rifle. Give us a little bit of a sense of, of what you want people to see and what some of that uh, background content is. Deirdre, can you, can you hear us? Oh dear, I think we might be losing Deirdre. Just let's pause for a moment and move to Laurie in case uh, Deirdre is able to rejoin us. Um, Laurie Pensini, I should mention, by the way, that you're in West Australia at the moment, and uh, uh, thank you for joining us from uh, the, uh, the West. Your image is the telegram, your painting is the telegram. Give us a sense of, uh, of why you decided to make that a part of this year's Gallipoli Art Prize. It's sort of something uh, from my childhood. Um, my grandma uh, was a rural, they were, we were farmers, uh, we still are. And it tells stories of the loneliness of being in the bush, but also more so around the, the loneliness of war and being a rural woman, the, um, you know, the uncertainty of 
having um, men, you know, loved ones, um, brothers and husbands not returning from war. And given, given the communication of the community, you know, there was um, the only communication was through this telegram that would arrive in the post, if at all. Um, and it took her two days to, to get to the, um, to the post office by horse and cart to then, you know, and all that time, you know, she had children on board and she was sitting there wondering whether, you know, what the telegram was going to say, if there was going to be one, and if there, um, if there was one, what it would say. So she was, there was quite, there was trepidation around um, her future for her family as well. I wanted, being a rural woman myself, and I know that um, a lot of these, these rural women live in isolation now, um, I wanted to highlight that um, it's still a part of, of our life. And even, even in the isolation, my grandfather, also with the war with my grandfather, um, there's, still, there's, there's still that character still comes through. Um, he, you know, just the, he came back and he never really recovered. And so she had to take up, um, she had to hold fast her family and the landscape as well. So there was a lot of, a lot of responsibility for the women. So I just sort of wanted a bit more of a plight of, of the women's role in war, even though it wasn't on the front line, it was, it was back home um, quietly, quietly, um, but it still had a major effect on families and, and even the families now. So a very, a very intimate, a very emotional painting um, as we see the, the, the young woman uh, who could well be your grandmother lying on the pillow looking at that telegram and we don't quite know as the viewer of the painting what the news in that telegram is, although we assume it's not good. Yeah, Did you want absolutely. to try to get that emotional response from the viewer? Absolutely, Richard. And, and for me, I, and I grew up with the, the tales of how you know, the war and, and understanding that my grandfather never came back the man um, he left. And I didn't really understand it, but as, as a woman now, um, I understand the importance of um, connection and, um, and loss. So I think it's, it's more prevalent now, and um, especially you know, given these times too, how we can reflect on the people in our life and how important it is, that family, that family unit, no matter where you live. So, um, yeah, it is um, my work based around um, yeah, uh, personal reflection of what I've gone through, my forebearers have gone through. And I think it's really important as an artist to be emotionally connected um, or invested in your work. And I think that that comes through with the sense of how that work comes. Let's see now whether um, Deirdre uh, has perhaps been able to rejoin us. Uh, Deirdre, are you there by any chance? Oh, I'm here now, Richard. I'm ah, sorry about that. My that's all right. We just lost you for a moment. Stable. We lost you for a moment, but uh, yes. let's return to uh, your work, Major Smith's Petrichor. Now, Petrichor is a word, a beautiful word, that refers to a smell associated with rain. How does that tie in with, uh, essentially, a, a painting of a rifle? Okay. So uh, the, the rifle I wanted to um, situate in a particular place in history, and that's the Battle of Long Tan. So reading about the history of the Battle of Long Tan, it happened, the battle started at about four o'clock in the afternoon, um, just before a massive big rainstorm. So I imagine Major Smith, who was the um, major leading our soldiers um, in, that, in that battle, um, I imagine I imagine them sitting there waiting and and happening. And then the smell of this rain coming, and um, and then of course it just was a complete deluge, and visibility was incredibly low, and uh, they had a very hard time of it. So, the actual weapon that you chose to portray in this, you've got that sense of that that personal memory of Major Smith or that personal experience of Major Smith. Uh, in the environment of a very tropical Vietnam, uh, but the weapon itself is very precisely portrayed as as you do very beautifully. Uh, tell us about your decision to um, to create that weapon. I, I had the opportunity to to um, to to paint this this weapon, draw it, and paint it as I, I do very sl slowly and meticulously, and I had a lot of time to think about um, the the significance of the 
of that particular weapon. It was the standard issue personal weapon of um, the Australian soldiers at the battle in, in that Vietnam, especially in that um, the Battle of Long Tan. And each day I went to work painting on that rifle, I imagined this, this weapon being almost the closest thing they had to their survival. And it had a, 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 a very good reputation as being a very um, accurate weapon and, very, and, and it was one of the keys to the success of Long Tan, this accuracy of the, of the weapon. And, um, and so each day I went to work painting it, I was trying to imagine how, um, how the soldiers were completely lying on this and again they were up against a very fierce and uh, um, foe that was just not giving up and um, and I think I, I think we may have just uh, lost you again for a moment Deirdre as you were coming towards the end of that thought um, but that very precise rendition, which is part of your practice, takes us into the world that you describe um, in a very material way. But coming back to you, Alison, um, I know you've been a, a finalist in the Gallipoli Art Prize uh, for seven years now, exploring a range of different themes. What draws you to the prize and and the themes or the, the obligations, uh, inspirations of the prize itself? Yes, look, it's a very interesting prize, Richard. As you said at the beginning, uh, it is called the Gallipoli Art Prize. But in fact, um, works don't need to be about Gallipoli. They don't even need to be about war. Uh, they're actually officially responding to the Gallipoli Creed, which involves the qualities of loyalty, of respect, of courage, comradeship and love of country. So it's a very broad brief uh, and everybody interprets it very, very differently, which makes for a very diverse and interesting exhibition. And I've always found um, that, I, that I can interpret it in a very personal manner, which makes the paintings that I, that I make each year uh, really interesting and fun for me and hopefully entertaining for other people to look at as well. Laurie, um, am I right in understanding this was your uh, your first year of entry to the Gallipoli or have you um, put entries into the prize before? Uh, no Richard, I, uh, I've entered, uh, this is my third year and I've, I've been fortunate enough to, to be uh, in the finals three years running. Oh my apologies, I, I, uh, I wasn't clear on that but um, great to know. So again, uh, a similar question. Um, as, uh, as you respond to those themes of the, the, the Gallipoli Creed, how varied do the works that you uh, produce in response to that tend to be? Um, yeah, I generally, um, I, I'm generally, um, I'm a storyteller and I, um, I'm reflecting on the stories that I grew up with generally. Um, because like I, I mentioned before, the war still had effect. Um, in society today, and um, like Alison said, with the camaraderie and um, strength of character, and uh, and I um, I really respect that the bonding and the coming together of communities through adversity. So I like to infuse yeah the, the human element into it. And, and I love representing um, the Gallipoli. I love being able to keep that memory alive of of how we are a community and how we how we keep together. And I think that that's a, it's a beautiful platform to vision. Um, you know, it's a great platform, this visual idea of stimulating people through, through images um, to, to reconnect to their past and also what they have now. I think it's important. And Deirdre, again, I, I hope perhaps we may be able to reconnect with you, your sense of connection yeah. with the, uh, the Gallipoli Art Prize and works which you've uh, had involved with the prize previously. How would you describe that? Uh, sure. yeah. um, thanks for having me back. <laughs> um, I, I actually been to Gallipoli twice and I've also been to the Western Front on, with artists and um, each time I can't help getting completely emotionally overwhelmed by 
the, these places. And uh, when in my res my response to um, my response to being in those places is to create something that's I would think aesthetically beautiful, um, something that takes me a long time to do, but sort of ask, asking the viewer maybe to um, uh, consider what what not even the subject matter what what the rifle might have been used for but also seeing it as um a representation of something quite beautiful in the face of something quite horrific such as the war um the vietnam war was the only war that i'm old enough to be have any sort of um personal um, relationship with um and i remember well, i grew up in a very small town and there was just one person in that um, town that went to Vietnam and uh, I think we may just have lost your sound again Deirdre so I'm, I'm going to, to you know what uh, sorry Deirdre uh, you're just breaking up a little bit again so I'm, I'm going to move on and we can come back to you shortly um, but I'd just like to spend a moment or two with all three of you um, reflecting more broadly on your art practices uh, and whether the works that you have submitted for the Gallipoli Art Prize uh, represent or refer to your art practice in, uh, in more general ways. Um, so Alison coming to you first, uh, your work Breathe, it's uh, nine gas masks as we've heard um, and as hopefully people have seen as they've uh, visited the website. How does that relate to your um, art practice and your usual approach to subject matter? Well, I don't spend a lot of time painting gas masks per se. <laughs> gas masks are actually, for me, um, a, a still life painting. They are an object in a space. And essentially that's pretty much what still life painting is. And that's uh, the, the large focus of my practice is still life painting. Um, and I suppose I've always seen that as a particularly interesting area of painting because it seems to me to be incredibly contemporary because essentially you're painting things that surround you every day. You're getting involved in uh, the materiality of what it is that is your everyday life. So for me, still life has always been a really contemporary practice uh, and that's where I've really loved to focus. And um, you say uh, objects around you uh, every day. Um, clearly gas masks aren't, uh, but do you enjoy that process uh, through the, the Gallipoli Art Prize of ex exploring something that you certainly wouldn't have around you every day? Yes, look, it does allow me to uh, expand my practice a little bit. Although when you look at the gas masks, you can see that they're made out of things like leather and rubber and glass and steel. And these are all actual materials that I often paint. I particularly love painting reflective objects and also clear glass objects. So in a way, the still life, um, the gas masks were just a perfect variation on what it is I already love to try and describe using oil paint. Laurie, turning to your uh, art practice and the, the subject matter and approach that you take, how would you summarise it? Um, well, I'm a, uh, generally a figurative uh, painter, Richard. So um, for me, I'm, uh, I'm interested in uh, the emotional side, emotional connection um, through the human form. I, I quite often use botanicals as well as metaphors for the, for the people's characters. But um, on this this time, um, this painting was was quiet, quietly um, reflective. So I need I needed to uh, par back my work. Uh, normally, I, I feel it was some sort of um, um, yeah symbol, um, but I thought she was powerful enough with just um, just being still. So, um, yes, it was, um, I had to be a bit more reflective with this piece, um, which is great. It's a great challenge to part back. I had um, hand painted uh, linen, so I changed my linens, which was quite grippy, and um, I normally like my canvas to flow a bit, um, so I can sort of flow through the, the story, but this one was a little bit harder, so, um, but I really enjoyed the challenge and that sort of old, um, yeah, the old sense I got to it, the old, um, the muddying of colours. Um, so. Yeah, it was, um, I was really, really pleased with um, in my connection to that piece and to, to those stories. I felt I, um, I did my mother justice with this one. Indeed so. Let's um, see if we can rejoin Deirdre. Deirdre, are you back with us and can you hear us again? I'm 
having terrible trouble reaching. Keep going though. Keep speaking because I think if you if you continue to speak, we may see you. you. Okay. Ah, there we go. So, yes. uh, well, we have you in um, maybe not the most ideal form, but we have you uh, no. to a certain extent. Let me let me ask you uh, essentially the same question uh, in terms of your broader practice, uh, which, as you've mentioned, does involve very detailed, very carefully uh, observed works. Um, Tell us something about that broader practice and uh, what it is that you focus on. Deirdre, have we lost you again? I think we, I think we may have done. It's also, uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, just keep, keep yeah. speaking, Deirdre. Okay. Oh dear mostly between subjects and yeah well oh, sorry I'm no, sorry okay. um, let, let's let's just have another try uh just try speaking once again and giving us a little bit of a sense of that broader practice okay. of yours okay so mostly my practice is around um I paint in watercolors on paper i think we may have lost you again um I'm so sorry, Deirdre. I think we may have done. Um, so, look, uh, because unfortunately we do seem to have, have lost Deirdre and it would have been great to hear a little more about her yeah, broader practice. Um, but I would like to thank each of you for being involved with this and congratulate each of you uh, for your... Um, awards in the Gallipoli Art Prize 2020. And a reminder to viewers, of course, to go to the Gallipoli Art Prize website, have a look at the exhibition, have a look not only at the, the winning work and the highly commended works, but a whole range of other uh, very interesting and beautifully executed works that are part of the exhibition, and have a look at the virtual tour uh, that can be undertaken. Um, terrific technology there, particularly for these times when we can't actually visit in person. Uh, but my thanks to all of you. Uh, so thank you, Alison Mackay. Thank you, Richard. Great to be here. Uh, thank you, Laurie Pensini. Yes, thank you, Richard. Um, and I'm not sure that whether we'll get a final appearance, but thank you, Deirdre Bean. <laughs> thank you, Richard. I finally have you. <laughs> oh, you are there. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we're able to say goodbye. Uh, but okay. look, thank you for being uh, a part of the discussion. And thank you all for sharing your exhibition, the Gallipoli Art Prize 2020, with us today.